Hey everyone. Hey everyone. It's Naomi Wolf. I'm CEO of Daily Clout and I'm here to um, announce something really, really great, exciting, a good start. Um, many of you know that Daily Clout, and that means you, um, we've been focusing on uh, the issue of missing and murdered women, and we did um, a couple of reports on this really pressing issue. Uh, in fact, we reported um, from Washington State uh, when a lawmaker there, actually a conservative lawmaker, had introduced a bill to actually keep track of the missing and murdered women. And for those of you who are you know, new to this issue, um, let me explain to you because it'll blow your mind. You know, and it's also such a, a, a kind of object lesson in what the media thinks is important or not important. So you might think it's kind of important that hundreds of women are disappearing in North America, like literally disappearing. Uh, people who are part of the missing and murdered women community, the loved ones of these women who are vanishing, tell absolutely horrific stories that um, their sister or their aunt was cooking dinner, the meal was hot on the stove, she stepped out to get cigarettes or stepped out to get an ingredient from the, the local deli, literally steps outside and vanished with the the food still still cooking. Um, People report that, you know, their their daughters, their nieces, you know, stepped outside and were gone. And uh, it, it's, it's just absolutely chilling. And what's in some ways even more, you know, as chilling is that you may not have heard about this. And, you know, the first time I heard about this, I thought that can't be right. I mean, the, the numbers the advocates cite are hundreds hundreds of missing and murdered women. Um, this is especially true in Canada with indigenous women. Hundreds, and I thought that's gotta be a mistake that can't be accurate. Uh, how could hundreds of women go missing and it's not a national emergency? But it's actually true. It is hundreds of women have gone missing and some of them have turned up, unfortunately, sadly murdered. Um, often sexually assaulted and murdered uh, you know, in this brutal, brutal epidemic. So just for a moment, imagine if hundreds of white women, you know, upper middle class white women were suddenly disappearing, you know, stepping out of their vans after dropping their kids off at school, you know, coming home after playing a round of golf and disappearing. It would be uh, as it should be absolute front page news. And the same should be true, of course, for these hundreds of indigenous women, which is the phrase that's used in Canada, Native American women, is more commonly used in, Amer in, in, in the United States of America, um, disappeared. So when we've been reporting on this, <clears throat> what we reported last summer, when we were reporting on that bill introduced by a conservative lawmaker in Washington state, and it passed, right? We found that there were four states um, that had similar bills, and as, as often happens with a good piece of legislation, with legislation that's actually addressing an issue that needs to be addressed, and as you know, if you're part of the Daily Cloud community, that's more often <laughs> happening on a state level than on a federal level, unfortunately. But what often happens is that one state will produce a really good bill, and then reasonably enough, other states will um, kind of reproduce it, right? It, it doesn't necessarily have to be a uh, nefarious thing, like many of you are familiar with the Koch brothers and how they'll um, introduce 22 identical bills that are uh, pro-life or anti-choice, depending on your point of view, in 22 different states. And they'll just kind of scale bills and replicate them. It's not that. It's actually grassroots lawmakers at a state level who are all grappling with comparable problems. These are um, often Western states. Uh, Montana is a state. I believe Utah is a state that has a missing and murdered women bill. I mentioned Washington State. Um, Oregon, I believe, is following suit. And they reasonably enough, you know, don't want to reinvent the wheel. There's a good piece of legislation. They adapt it. They make some changes to suit their state circumstances. 
hopefully they get bipartisan buy-in. It's certainly a bipartisan issue. If, if any issue is bipartisan, women going vanishing in North America is bipartisan. And they introduced the bills. So when I looked at these four bills, what was very striking, you know, you think that if, if people introduce legislation to address the problem of missing and murdered women, it will be a gigantic effort coordinating law enforcement, putting money uh, on the table, um, paying for awareness campaigns, paying for databases. Uh, but actually what I found is that the, the bills start much further back and, and in kind of a, a, a scarily basic way because it turns out that no one was keeping track of these women, that there were no databases that were consistent or coherent to tell a reporter like me, how many women are there who have gone missing? What were the circumstances? What are their names, right? If their loved ones are willing to release their names, no way to see, and, and like, this sounds like a really nerdy problem, right? No databases. It's not nerdy. Think about it. If no one's keeping track, it's like, why have a database of people who died in the Holocaust? Why have a database of people who were enslaved during the years of slavery in North America? Because if you don't have a database, you don't know what happened. How much more so for living families, you know, who are searching for their loved ones and for law enforcement to be able to have a database that records everyone who's gone missing so that you can see patterns, so that you could see have multiple women gone missing in this one town, have multiple women's remains been found near this, in, in this one area. Um, are there any cross links that these women who don't know each other maybe knew this perpetrator who might have a violent history, not, none of that is possible because the women were not being kept track of. So that seems incredible. It's incredible to me. It's also, I hate to say it, not incredible to me because, you know, having studied women's issues for 30 years, when people are not valued, right, when they're not held at the center of society when there's racism, when there's sexism, as there is with indigenous people and with women, and then you put that together, indigenous women, so few advocates, so little money, so few resources, right? People who are forgotten, who've been brutalized for the, the whole history of, of this country's establishment, right, of the United States. It, it, it no longer surprises me that, um, that, that, they did not have champions to actually create a database that works and that's searchable and that law enforcement can use. But there's another really interesting problem, which is why this issue is sensitive and has to be dealt with in a culturally sensitive way, but also why there's been some uh, reluctance on the part of US government law enforcement to be effective. Um, it doesn't excuse them. It's just giving some background. So what you have to understand is that uh, Native American re reservations, sovereign lands is the more appropriate term. They're a different legal system and they're a different law enforcement system. They're really different countries than the United States of America. They're like the U.S. is a perforated state, really. And these nations, which used to be gigantic, of course. Well, of course, they used to be the entire continent of the United States, but they got progressively smaller and smaller, as we know from studying American history, especially hidden American history. Um, treaties were not respected. Boundaries to this day are being shaved off, shaved off by the federal government. And they're also simply different uh, legal systems, right? So that's why you have, we've talked about this um, the ability to gamble on a sovereign territory, but you that may not be legal in the state, the United States state that surrounds it. Um, and there are other differences. Um, and basically, these are self-governing uh, lands. They they have tribal councils. They're 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 countries. Um, most people don't know that. I mean, even the word reservation, right? It's one of those horrible imperialist words. Um, but they're they're separate countries within the United States. So as a consequence, the FBI kind of has a rationale for 
uh, not going onto sovereign lands to look for these women. And the there can also be understandably uh, reluctance, distrust, resistance on the part of the Native American leadership to collaborate with uh, representatives of a federal government who, which has in the past done horrific things, genocidal things to Native people in, in North America, not just in the United States, but in Canada as well. Um, we have a lot of Canadian viewers. I'm so glad I welcome you. Uh, and you know, this is part of your history too. Um, and if you don't know, you should read about it. Uh, and the same is true for the, the people in the United States. Um, but so this, this, these centuries of distrust and, and combat have meant that there is resistance on both sides to working together. And often it's suspected that the crimes that are being committed in abducting these women go across from United States territory to sovereign lands. Um, or possibly from sovereign lands to United States territory. So what's happening to these women? Uh, some of you who have watched the last video know what some of the theories are. Um, there's a lot of speculation and some eyewitness accounts that uh, some of these women are being trafficked. They're being abducted, they're being transported on major highways. Um, truckers are uh, seen as being a, a medium of, of moving them along of the abduction. And their people have seen uh, Native American women um, being uh, boarded onto ships um, in ports in on the West Coast. Um, there's some speculation that they're they have a high value on the international sex trafficking market um, that sick people want to traffic. Um, exploit, sexually exploit Native American women that that has a certain glamour among the perverts of the world who uh, are customers for the international sex trade. Um, and other other women are just murdered, like their remains are found. Um, it's, it's very, very tragic. And the speculation, it's not really speculation, is that if you're a murderer or if you're a rapist, um, you are more likely to get away with it, right? It's a target of opportunity to abduct a woman and take her onto a Native American reservation, onto sovereign territory, and you know, miles and miles of undeveloped land um, away from American law enforcement, and and do away with her there or commit the crime there. Uh, it's a horrible thing to speculate about, but uh, the history of this, of sovereign of sovereign nations of, of Native American people in this country shows, and there's a great book about this, um, Killers of the Flower Moon, shows that that's happened in the past. That when criminals want to commit crimes, um, they they do cross over. They can cross over onto sovereign territory because U.S. law enforcement does not have jurisdiction. It's um, it's a really interesting and horrible thing to consider because what the bottom line is, it leaves this population of Native American women very vulnerable. So now let's look at what happened this week. Um, Attorney General William Barr uh, issued a press release launching a national strategy to address missing and murdered Indigenous people. Um, so what is that going to do? And then it says federal prosecutors and the FBI will enhance investigations into missing persons and develop protocols for law enforcement, improvements to data collection and analysis, training and technical assistance. So that sounds great. And it also sounds like, and I have to take a little bit of, of pride in, in our community, we've really been yelling and screaming about this issue. And it does sound like a little bit of um, the uh, mobilization on the grassroots level, on a state level, and the attention that it was getting has kind of trickled up. And someone in the attorney general's office said, you know what, this is a good issue. People are paying attention to it. We're under fire. Uh, you know, women's issues are very prominent right now in the news. Let's go ahead and do something about this. But let's see if this really has any teeth. So Attorney General Barr launched a national strategy to address missing and murdered Native Americans. The Missing and Murdered Indigenous Persons Initiative, MMIP, places MMIP coordinators in 11 U.S. Attorney's offices who will develop protocols for a more coordinated law enforcement response to missing cases. 
The plan also calls for the deployment of the FBI's most advanced response capabilities when needed, improved data collection analysis, and training to support local efforts. So that really does seem to be the three things that the activists have said they really need. Better data, right, a database, coordination, and resources. Um, so Attorney General Barr didn't make the announcement hanging out in his office in D.C. It's a you know, D.C., the White House is not a fun place to be right now, no doubt. When I was a political consultant, something bad was happening at the White House. Uh, a trip to some scenic place where the national political correspondents and photographers could get a different um, subject and a different picture was very attractive and desirable. It's called changing the subject. So they changed the subject and they sent uh, Attorney General Barr to the personally to the Flathead Reservation in Montana. And the Flathead Reservation is home of the Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribes, CSKT. In addition, uh, Barr met with um, a working group of activists there and the tribal council. And these are people who are basically the leadership, his, his counterparts essentially um, in the uh, reservation. He was joined by U.S. Attorney Kurt Almi, a vice chair of the Attorney General's Native American Issues Subcommittee, whose office has been at the forefront of this issue. May I note, you know, men and governments, I mean, no disrespect to men, their office hasn't been at the forefront of this issue. I mean, I get that they have a person. It's Native American women who have been at the forefront of this issue and mobilizing and trying to raise money, trying to raise awareness, including the loved ones of women who have gone missing. So I, I do object to that um, claiming of credit uh, because especially since what we've seen so far has been inaction at a federal level. Quote, American Indian and Alaska Native people suffer from unacceptable and disproportionately high levels of violence, which can have lasting impacts on families and communities. Native American women face particularly high rates of violence with at least half suffering sexual or intimate partner violence in their lifetimes. Too many of these families have experienced the loss of loved ones who went missing or were murdered, said Attorney General William Barr. This important initiative will further strengthen the federal, state, and tribal law enforcement responses to these continuing problems. Well. I've got to tell you all, it's hard to do these updates sometimes because they can be so infuriating. What that quote from Attorney General Barr did is basically blame the community uh, when it is often demonstrably an issue of outsiders coming through, abducting women when there's this concern about trafficking women. This uh, quote puts the problem squarely in the Native American home. And while domestic violence is definitely an issue, and the numbers are disproportionately high for Native American communities for a lot of reasons, um, they're high everywhere in every community, including wealthy white people in Washington, D.C. So uh, I really do object to that quote. The FBI recognizes the violence the tribal communities face, though no mention of trafficking or abduction, and is fully committed to working with our federal, state, local, and tribal law enforcement partners to provide support to those impacted by these crimes. Uh, we are dedicated to delivering justice and to the FBI's mission to protect all the people we serve. We reaffirm our focus on allo allocating resources to serve Native American needs. In Montana, we recognize that Native American women face too much violence and too often go missing and are murdered, said U.S. Attorney for the District of Montana, Kurt Almy. The missing need to be found and brought home, murderers and abusers must be brought to justice, and violence against women must stop. I like that language. With the Attorney General's leadership, this initiative will provide an improved nationally coordinated response when a Native American goes missing. It will complement the steps taken by our office this year to bring public training to all seven Montana reservations on how to find missing loved ones. To partner with the Montana Department of Justice, the FBI and BIA to provide two statewide trainings on using missing persons databases and alerts and to partner with the MTDOJ and the tribes on the statewide missing indigenous persons task force to collectively find solutions to this issue. So I'm listening closely with my daily clout ear and what I'm hearing is not terrible. It's um, training to use a database about where presumably finally missing 
and murdered women are recorded. Um, and that takes some resources and that's a great start because that was one thing that was really missing. And I'm hearing that there's that coordination, but I'm really not hearing um, money or additional law enforcement personnel tasked with protecting women specifically. Tribal leaders from across America have spoken and we have listened. Again, this is a little hard for me as a feminist to hear. I am certain that tribal leaders have spoken. I, I know that they have, but the, this movement really originated again with the grassroots, with, with women who are not privileged, women who are not uh, fortunate to sit in leadership positions, women who are working very hard, who are very low income often, who may be struggling with unemployment, with health issues. They're the ones who have been mobilizing around this for years, right? And I, it's just maddening to hear, you know, everyone at the top of each of these nations say, well, we're finally handling it. Um, said U.S. Attorney Trent Shores for the Northern District of Oklahoma. Now is the time for action. For far too long, Native American women and Alaska Natives, especially women, have experienced unacceptably high rates of violence. Again, they keep blaming, implying that it's domestic violence, that it's basically Native American men when Many indices suggest that it is certainly also outsiders to the community, possibly even traffickers. And it's not as if at this point in the Epstein saga, we don't know that there are networks of, of traffickers, but they're not even beginning to include that, which seems, again, odd and kind of racist. Attorney General Barr's Missing and Murdered Indigenous Persons Initiative will enhance public safety partnerships in Indian country while helping to provide justice to families mourning a murder victim or assistance to communities searching for a missing friend or neighbor. They're honored to host William Barr to the homeland of the Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribes. Um, they're gonna discuss other issues and they're happy to have him visit. So the strategy has three parts. They're establishing MMIP, Missing and Murdered Indigenous People Coordinators. How much are they investing? This, get ready for it, sit down for it, $1.5 million, right? Hundreds of women, I'll say this again, hundreds of women are missing. How much money does this press release represent? $1.5 million to hire 11 MMIP coordinators in 11 states to serve with all U.S. attorney's office in those states and others who request assistance. The states are Alaska, Arizona, Montana, Oklahoma, Michigan, Utah, Nevada, Minnesota, Oregon, New Mexico, and Washington state. Well, that's great, actually. I mean, apart from how furious I am about the money, um, it's kind of satisfying to bring you the next step in a kind of a successful uh, next step in this story we've been telling of this people trying to pass laws to address this problem in four states. So when we last touched base with you, there were four states. Now there are 11 states. Um, and clearly the scope of this shows that people are accepting that this is a widespread problem, right? This is a, like a third of the United States. I'm sorry. It's a quarter of the United States. Um, it's, it's, all across the West, really. Uh, it's all the way to the, to the middle of the country, Michigan, um, Minnesota. It's, it's vast, it's, it's, it, it's it, it, so many places. Um, so 11 people will be hired is the big announcement, right? The gigantic US government deals with hundreds of women going missing by hiring 11 human beings. Um, specialized FBI rapid deployment teams, well, that's cool. The strategy will bring needed tools and resources to law enforcement. Upon request by a tribal state or local law enforcement agency, the FBI will provide expert assistance um, and they may be activated to assist with cases that include child abduction rapid deployment teams, cellular analysis support teams, evidence response teams, cyber agents for timely analysis of digital evidence, social media, victim services division response teams, and others. MMIP coordinators will assist in developing protocols. I've got to say, that's good. That's a deliverable. And you heard in that list that these are things that if God forbid a loved one goes missing, you really will want. You'll want the FBI to direct resources, working with your tribal council, if you're Native American, to analyze the social media, to um, look at the evidence, to you know not let the crime scene go cold, 
to do the kinds of high level things that local law enforcement, especially in rural areas, may not have the training or resources to do. Comprehensive data analysis. The department will perform in-depth analysis of federally supported databases and analyze data collection practices to identify opportunities to improve missing persons data and share the results of this analysis with our partners in this effort. So that is absolute jargon. I have no idea what it actually means, but it seems to mean that they'll take seriously that they need to have a federal database, um, make sure that it's the details are entered fully and correctly, and then use it to analyze um, who might be committing crimes, which literally has not been happening. More broadly, the MMIP initiative will involve a coordinated effort by more than 50 U.S. attorneys on NAIS, the FBI, the Office of Tribal Justice, with support from the Office of Justice Programs and the Office of Violence Against Women. So they'll draw in and I guess educate 50 U.S. attorneys, so basically the whole country. You know, the, the intense um, hands-on help will be in these 11 states, but they're raising the uh, level of the issue to, to all 50 states. And that's great. I mean, I've got to say, you know, there's so much bad news here on Daily Cloud that we share with you, but this actually is some help. Today's announcement follows the uh, NIAS meeting in New Mexico and the OVW listening session in Michigan, where missing and murdered indigenous persons and violence against women in Indian country were prevalent topics of discussion. Um, so they're saying that it's, it's in response to uh, things that Native American women have been sharing with law enforcement. So, you know, and that's very PC, it's not top down. They're saying we've been listening to, to this community. So there you have it. Um, the bottom line is, oh, I have my friends showing up, that's so nice. The bottom line is that it's a pathetic, paltry amount of money. It's so hard for me sometimes not just get angry and I don't mean to just get on video and be furious, but really hundreds of women are missing and the one of the most powerful countries in the world hands over $1.5 million. It's, it's pocket change. It's less than pocket change. Um, and the other thing that's uh, frustrating is that it's only 11 human beings. Uh, it seems like an issue that requires far, far more. Um, and the, the last thing to recap that's quite frustrating is the way that this was described throughout as um, kind of a domestic violence issue, like like a lifestyle problem uh, that originates with the Native American community instead of women being targeted and possibly trafficked in systematic ways. So now we have um, Daisy. Hello, Daisy. And we have Eileen. And Daisy is saying thank you for reporting on such a critical issue. And Eileen, I can't quite read what you're saying there, but I'm really happy to have you. And um, I, I really am grateful to you all for 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 being present and for following this. And, and really, uh, the, the thing I want to leave you with is that, or, or share with you, there's, oh, Elena, Elena's saying hello with a really cute emoji. <laughs> um, I, I think you should feel really proud of yourselves because this, you know, this is, isn't an issue that was widely known about when we started discussing it. And I think it is important when people do make even a little bit of a difference or head in the right direction, even a little bit to um, acknowledge it. And we alerted the country to it when people, you know, mainstream media certainly was not paying attention to this issue. We uh, shown a light on the legislation in Washington state. We shown a positive light on it. Um, we did a blog about it. We reported on it. And I'm sure that many of you tweeted that material to your representative, which is how these things kind of escalate. That's the daily cloud methodology to kind of like give you the information so you can tweet it to your representative and say, look, I really care about this. Um, and then when they know that this is something that resonates, meaning polls well, you know, it's, 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 it's media, it's, it's media genic. I mean, I hate to be that cynical, but this is how campaigns and candidates think, even when they're governing, you know, they, especially now, right. Trump is showing up in images of Epstein photographs. Um, there's going to be a, a widening FBI investigation of the Epstein victims and the people who 
colluded with Epstein. There's going to be paths crossing, networks crossing with Trump, with Clinton. This is a really good time to do something nice for victimized women. Um, you know, I hate to be that cynical, but really that is how that is how governing works, especially in a 24-hour news cycle. But you should feel really, really good because this is movement, right? We we saw these four states, then it was, now it's 11 states. Um, we had the interview where the uh, leader in, in Washington state was saying, there's no money devoted to this. There's no, there's no database that works. No one's coordinating. And it does seem like the government did listen uh, at least to what the issues are. They're recapping the issues accurately, right? Coordination, money, and a database. Um, so that's reassuring. That's working. And you guys can turn up the amount of money that the resources for Native American for missing and murdered women get. And the way you do it is you take this video and this press release, which we'll embed in the video, and you send it to your representative. You just tweet it to your representative and, um, you know, you say, I want them to get $50 million. You know, I'm a taxpayer. I pay my taxes. This isn't enough. You can't do anything. You can barely hire 11 people for $1.5 million. Um, I mean, and resources. I mean, how, how sustainable is that? So you have the power to dial that up. You have the power to make good laws better and to get rid of bad laws. Uh, and I really want you to celebrate that because we're keeping this little flame alive. I just came back from Britain and it's alarming because they don't have a database like this. Their legislative databases do not work. They're not socially shareable and not to blow our horn too much, but no one in Britain is getting on YouTube every week and saying, this is what's going on in parliament. And here's, here are the actual bills or the actual acts of parliament. Here's how you let your member of parliament know what you think about it. No one's doing that. So people's rights and, and information about what's really going on is being chipped away, chipped away, chipped away. We're often frustrated with our country, but I feel happy to be back in the United States because, and we'll try to do the same for Britain that we did for the United States, but this little flame of democracy, we are tending it very well. You know, these things are working. We're, we're informing people about um, real issues and we're moving things along, right? Um, I mean, this issue of the missing and murdered women, it's, this is progress. It's not anywhere near where it has to be, but it is right that we're reporting on it. Uh, people can share this video. Um, next, we want to shine a light on the Native American women who are leading the charge about this uh, vital, vital issue. But there is a little bit more money and some more resources that those of you who shared our last video and, and raised this issue with your networks, you can take credit for. So I'm going to say thank you so much to Daisy. Um, preach. I love it. I love the exclamation points. Thank you so much to Aileen. Thank you to all of you. Thanks for the thumbs up. I'm going to sign off for now. That's Mushroom napping behind me, or my little elderly dog. Um, but I want to tell you how grateful I am to have you. And I also want to tell you, we are slowly but steadily getting more members and more membership. So if you're not a member yet, it makes such a big difference. Sorry, I just turned on the heat by accident. Um, it makes such a big difference. We're getting close to being able to to meet our monthly expenses. We're not there yet. Um, but if you give it as a Christmas gift or a Hanukkah gift or a Kwanzaa gift, right? Give a membership, become a Patreon supporter. And now it's really time. That, hey, Charles, how are you? Uh, good to see you. Um, now it's really time for you to think about Patreon. You know, $5 a month, $10 a month. If you think that these videos are valuable and that bill cam, which we're making even better so that you can search any bill, Believe me, I've just come back from the hell of not being able to search a searchable database and find out what's going on in Britain. And it is a real service, Bill Camp, you know. Um, if you think that that is worth doing and, and that moving these issues along are, are worth supporting, please send us your contributions and your membership because I need to pay these 
these girls and boys who helped me, these young men and women who helped me, and I need to keep our uh, developers paid, and I need to keep our hosting services paid, and I need to keep the data coming that informs you about bills. But what I was going to say is we're at the point now as a, a, as a community where email me, tell me my email is right there on Daily Cloud, Naomi at dailycloud.io. Email Mishka, email uh, Elena, email Fran. Um, we no longer have Isaiah. He went off to a great policy position, but we can pass on information to him. And let, let us know what you want us to cover, what we should share with people. Maybe there is an issue in your community that isn't getting the traction that it needs. We can cover it. You know, maybe there's a bill that you think will solve a problem and it, it, people need to know about it. We need to mobilize support. Tell us about it. And also write for us. You know, we're starting to get uh, people, uh, you know, members of our community writing blogs. You can write 800 to 1,000 words like you're talking to a smart 16-year-old. You can send us a headshot in a one or two sentence bio, embed a couple of links, and you're, a, you're an author, you're a commentator. You know, send us a video about the issues that you care about. We can post it, we can share us. We've got a feature now called Bulletin Board. You know, if there's a press release or, you know, an organization you support sends you an announcement, send it to us if you want us to get it out. You guys have made this very successful in our tiny uh, startup sort of way or formerly tiny startup sort of way. We reach 1.5 to 5.5 million Twitter impressions a month in a good month. And we have about 210,000 followers on our different social media platforms. So we are making a difference and it's it's because of you. So please think about if you're not a member, become a member. If you're not a patron, patron, become a patron. Um, if you just want to, you know, send us love and, you know, virtual hugs, do that and uh, have a wonderful rest of your week. We're going to be doing a second video, I hope and trust, this week um, to bring us up to date with what Congress is doing. But this was a special announcement, and I really wanted to share it with you because, in a way, it really is uh, something you can feel good about. Um, this is Naomi Wolf, CEO of Daily Clout. That's Mushroom Napping behind me, and have a wonderful Sunday night and start to your week. Take care. Bye.